Now this is extremely helpful for Let's say you are the new Linux administrator in an organization. Uh, the last administrator did not leave the password or change the password to be spiteful before he left, or you just simply forgot it, something to that effect. So what we can do is do this on root and or a regular user account. So I'm going to demonstrate this here in VirtualBox, but uh, this will work with a standalone machine just the same. So uh, in VirtualBox here, the only difference is I'm going to go to settings, and then I'm going to go down to storage. And I'm going to go to my IDE controller. I'm going to tick Live CD DVD. And I'm, for this, I'm going to go ahead and choose my virtual optical disk file. Uh, for this, I'm using Kelly Linux. You can use Ubuntu as long as it's a live distribution that you could test out uh, via CD or you know USB or something like that. So go ahead and uh, choose your operating system of choice. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and click start, and we're going to fire up the machine. Now, the difference is if this was a standalone machine, of, of course, you would just insert your uh, USB drive or your CD-ROM there and go ahead and boot up to it. And so I'm going to go ahead and go into the, the live mode here. And we'll just give this a couple minutes here until the desktop actually comes up. Okay, so once the desktop comes up, we're going to go ahead and fire up a terminal inside of our live distribution. Now, this will have to happen as root. Um, that's why I like Kelly Linux by default as a live distribution, you're a root. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is list our hard drives attached to this machine. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a virtual machine or a physical machine. So simply the command is fdisk, tack lowercase l to list. So you can see here our primary drive that we're working with is dev sda and we need to work with our partition dev sda1 it is a boot partition and the linux it's the linux file system here so what i'd like to do first is make directory mkdir and we're going to go ahead and put this in mnt for mount and then we'll just name it nix and hit enter so if all goes well you'll be returned back to a prompt from here, we need to mount the actual partition SDA1 into this folder. So the command is mount tac t for file system type. We're just going to go ahead and put this as auto. It works real well with uh, multiple Linux file systems. And then we're going to specify our partition that we want to work with. In our case, dev SDA1. And we want to do a space and then mount it into mnt nix, the folder we just created. Hit enter. If all goes well, you're back to a prompt again. Now, once we're inside here, let's go ahead and CD over to MNT Nix and hit enter. Let's do an LS in here. Now, the folder or directory that we're after is the ETC directory, as you can see here. I'll go ahead and highlight it for you there. And we're going to go ahead and CD into there and hit enter. Now inside here we'll ls, and this will list all the files of course inside the directory. So now if you've been following along with our Pentester University Linux Fundamentals series, uh, you'll know most of these commands will be very familiar to you. Uh, however, if you're seeing this video somewhere else or on YouTube or something to that effect, um, basically we want to list all the files in that directory. The file that we're after specifically is passwd, that's a password file. Now you'll notice that there's two here with the dash, but we are focused on the one without the dash right here. So what we'll go ahead and do is use a text editor, a terminal-based text editor. Uh, you can use anything that you're familiar with or what you like, but uh, if you've been following along with me, you know that I like to use VI, and we have a course specifically on VI, in fact. So I'll go ahead and VI, password, and hit enter. Now, inside here is where you can see pretty much a lot of good information. Uh, you'll notice here the root account is at the top, and where this X is right here specifies that it has a password. Now, this was set up by default, so uh, right here we can literally take away that X and reset root's password, meaning when ne next time we go to log in after we reboot out of this uh, um, live CD, uh, we'll boot up to the regular operating system, and now we will not be asked for a password for root. Now keep in mind this is kind of dangerous, so you want to take care of this like right away uh, because that means that basically anybody that logs in between the time you do uh, can log in root with no password, so super dangerous, right? Um, let's take a look at another example further on down the list here and go all the way to the bottom here. Now this is a regular user account that we'll be after, and you can see it's PTU as uh, denoted here. And you can see that after that, instead of having an X, it has a hashed password 
here, all this in purple, right? So if you noticed that uh, the X is between two colons. So if we wanted to change this user's password or reset it, I should say, uh, we'll go ahead and just get rid of everything that's between PTU colon and that other colon where it says 1000 and then again colon 1000. So let me show you what that looks like here real quick. Now be careful here because you don't want to delete anything else but what's in between there. So we will go ahead and go right up to there. And that's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of there. I'm going to write and quit my changes to the file. Now we go ahead and reboot into the regular operating system and you'll go ahead and see uh, that PTU, the user PTU, we can log in with no password and then we'll do an SSH into it to log in with root with no password as well. So just give me one second here. We'll go ahead and re uh, we'll actually shut down because we need to unmount the uh, live CD. So I'll shut down H now. Okay, so then one more in here. If you were in front of your physical machine, obviously, of course, you would just take out the uh, USB or the CD that you use with your live operating system to boot up into it. Uh, if you're doing this with a virtual machine, we'll just go over here to settings. We'll go back down to storage, click on this, uncheck live, and then we'll go to the back down to the drop down menu, remove disk from virtual drive just to be safe, and go ahead and click OK. And now we'll go ahead and start up the machine. Okay, once we boot it up to the login screen, whether it be a terminal or GUI based, in this case it's a GUI based, uh, just go ahead and click on the username and you can see it does not prompt us for a password here. So we're logging in again because we took away the password field uh, as denoted inside of the password file. And you can see we'll come up here to a desktop in just a moment. And you can see that's pretty much it. So that's how to do that. Uh, the same applies for root. So we'll go ahead and SSH into root here in just a second. So then um, we'll log in as a regular user because of the SSH security built in for not uh, allowing passwordless logins. And then we'll go ahead and switch user to root. And you can see it doesn't prompt us for a password. Uh, so in here, we would just reset root's password. So the command is password, or P-A-S-S-W-D. And then we'll just type in a new password. And that's pretty much it. It wraps it up. So that's uh, resetting a password for a user, whether it be root or a regular user or any kind of user on the system uh, with having physical access to it uh, for whatever reason, whether you forgot it or somebody changed it or whatever.